by telling their people they're yeah. being recorded. Hey, uh, you're being recorded. Okay, I fully consent and acknowledge. Thank you for your two-party consent. <laughs> if you'll con- sign these consent forms. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, gosh, there's some really great South Park episodes of, like around that. Um, okay, so what a special day. The cosmos have intersected once amongst the many, and I'm here with my <laughs> my good friend, <laughs> my special favorite boy. Nicholas, how are you doing, man? I'm I'm doing fantastic. Thank you for having me. This is serendipitous, right? I, I feel like I've been on the outside for so long, and I'm finally getting you know a peek behind the curtain and all the cool vinyl guy shit that's going on on the internet. So I'm absolutely looking forward to it. I'm so they thank you for having me. This is this is a treat. Well, as they say, you know, and I'm sure you feel the same way when people ask about what you're doing because they don't understand it, and you tell people like, look, I'm pretty important on the internet. Right. You don't, that's what you I don't that's know. what I tell people about my life. I'm like, dude, I'm pretty important on the internet. You should see is, me. I'll uh, I, I will I tear to, a forum down. I try to avoid it at all costs. You know, Nick, what are you working on? I'm like, ah, you know, this and that. Just don't worry. It's easier to just not even get into it, right? Because having to get into the you know re- reducible complexity of the space that you occupy in, right? It's yeah. it's ridiculously specific and niche. It, it, it's too much context, and the eyes start glazing over. You know, it's like, yeah, so you've heard of records, right? But yeah, like, let's get more specific. I'm like, look, there's things in it. You like right. stuff? <laughs> right. That's been my my world. So uh, as we go through this, I'm going to do my best to try to explain, have you explain what Wax Vessel is. Okay. And I know a lot of your heart lies in the MySpace era. And so I'm going to try to ask you as many MySpace okay. related era questions as Love I can. It. Okay, so... Okay. Uh, ASL. <laughs> uh, hello, I'm thirty. <laughs> I'm male, and I'm in Chicago. I'm in Chicago. So thanks for <laughs> all right. Well, GTG, uh, AFK, all right. TTYL. Yeah. My name's Chris. I'm thirty-four, right. <laughs> <laughs> and I live in Indiana. Uh, yeah. Uh, Yahoo Pool. Take me back. Yeah, right. <laughs> You're like thinking you're like in eighth grade and you're playing Yahoo Pool. You're like, dude, I'm talking to this hot babe. I this know is, it. And it's like some like 54 year old it's definitely like, dirt us bag now, man. Right? It's yeah. we, 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 <laughs> right. I'm like, hey, you want a cyber? Like, what's <laughs> what's going on? I I feel like I was at I, I did such a terrible job because here's here's a little bit of, of backstory, I guess, into you know, aim, you know, because I'm sure you remember Gosh. your your oh aim, man. I so right? when I was in remember? college. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. When I was in college, I was my freshman year was like the last year before. A, you still had to have co- like a college ID to get Facebook, yeah. which really ages me a little bit. And then <laughs> Facebook Messenger didn't even exist. Facebook no. chat. It was just Facebook chat at the time. Right. And so AIM was still real important. It was, number, it was the number one. Yeah, dude. Mine was. Um, I remember I made mine. I was. God, I was a, a tween at that point, I think. And I, re- I just remember, I, you know, I was on the swim team. I was on the Montgomery Makos, and I was fast. I was like a torpedo, right? Let's go Makos. But I, but I was a human. I wasn't a torpedo. I was a man. I was a man. I was man-pedo. a human torpedo. <laughs> I, which, you know, in you know, manpedo is very close to manpedo if you spell it well, out. You know what? If that's your screen name, that's a tough one. <laughs> to, <laughs> that's that's the story I'm getting at here. I thought it was charming at the time, but you know. Hindsight's twenty twenty. I realize now what I've done, and I uh, I don't have that email address anymore. I am. Uh, that's, that's a real shame, you know. It just. I know it's a tough one. sign of the times. Oh my gosh, um, that'll show up on a QAnon site somewhere. Right. Um, <laughs> you got. Oh fuck, they got me. <laughs> they got <laughs> secret talk. Took. Yeah, right. Uh, he he. This guy loves pizza. We know what that means. All right. Look at his. Look at he's, he's right in front of he's, you. He's flaunting it out in the open. He knows with a name like he's that. He's so arrogant. He's right. so arrogant. A liberal elite from Chicago. Get a load of this libtard with his fancy aim name from 20, 15 years ago. All I the thing I remember oh. most was just my picture was Sonic the Hedgehog, and I no no way. Who would I, and I and I was like Sonic's pretty tight. Let's Sonic's let's use cool. Sonic. <laughs> That's That's tough. I mean, how does it feel to have to say that in like 2020 in this kind of post internet people making cool videos uh, and images of Sonic just not racing for rings, right? Like that's a tough yeah, subculture he's, to he, be in. Yeah, like I thought that was his sole like 
purpose in life, but you'd think so. Now no, he's it's just much more nefarious. Now, yeah, now he's just a charming hedgehog. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> All right. So, man, what a time to be alive. Um, so, your day job. I, yeah. Well, before we get through the minutia, there's okay. I always like to pull back the curtain a little bit, and the reason is I really focus on DIY independent bands, independent sure. labels. And showing people like, yo, you can do something like just it, just start and yeah. you never know what will happen. Like I got to go full time with vinyl this year. And that is man because of just what a, being an what idiot. A nightmare. I mean, congrats. <laughs> right. But <laughs> Oh, I'm going to get there. I, I actually from another interview you did. I'm uh, going to read you a quote. And oh, we can dis- quote from we myself? Can, oh, no. We can discuss the nightmare, okay? <laughs> so I put, I put a little bit of research into this. Okay, so. well, I love it. Well, I'll, um, I, I like talking about it a lot because it, it literally is kind of the, the culmination of all of this, you know, nostalgia and DIY ethos and, you know, all these kind of things that people feel when they want to make a label. And I, you know, I'm a, a, just a regular guy and I had all those things. And I'm like, fuck, I got to yeah. do it. So yeah, for sure. I was, I was at a soul crushing job. I was in a, I was, at a, I was at the federal savings bank. It's a terrible job, right? I'm, I had a buddy who worked at the Fed in Chicago. His name was oh. Theodore. Theodore Bogus. I called him Ted the Fed. What? No, I don't know him. Unfortunately, Darn. wouldn't that have been great oh. if I did? I, I know it would have been <laughs> like like a. He's still so, my heart. Go yeah, on. I'm a um I'm a um I'm a mortgage broker by by trade, and um at, at the time I had started a, a company with my buddy. It was a classic kind of. You know, let's be Silicon Valley. Like we're we're kind of dumb, and you know, now's the time to do it. Right? We don't have any real responsibility, and it it didn't work out at all. And like we lost all of our <laughs> money. And I'm like, fuck, I gotta go work for the man. I gotta go to the cubicle with the polo. You know, I gotta go do mortgages at the Federal Savings Bank. So I, I was there for a couple of months, and it was it was just crushing my will to live. <laughs> to live, right? It's it's the antithesis of culture. Like it's it's the worst. So. It's it's destroying me from the from the inside out, and I, I'm like I've got to do I've got to do something. So that's that's the preface, right? Like that's the setup. You know, that's yeah. the Batman's parents being killed, we, right? So we got to have a, some escapism, right? There's some definitely some escapism, right? And because I'm an original guy, you know what's uh what's more escapist than you know reliving the glory days, right? A little bit of nostalgia. Yeah. So it, so that's kind of side one. Side two is that also I'm a I'm a big you know record guy, right? So I have you know, a couple thousand records just as a guy who buys records. I just, you know, I'm a record hobbyist. So, you know, I'm kind of in that scene, kind of in the Instagram, you know, Facebook marketplace, vinyl swapping, yeah. you know, dead format, discogs type of guy. And all this, all this time has passed. I'm like, man, remember when all of these bands existed that everyone loved, but we were all teenagers and now we're not. And now we're all adults who love records we're in the middle of a you know vinyl resurgence right now yeah and, and no one's no one's fit those two pieces together right and i'm sitting there, i'm waiting i'm like it's been 15 years like is someone gonna put you know destroyer destroyer on vinyl is it ever gonna happen and it, and it wasn't it was never happening so it just turned into well i got you know i got a couple grand a limit on my credit card here i guess let's just <laughs> let's fire let's this just, bad boy let's up. just fuck it let's just go for it right Uh-oh, so i lost you i lost oh, your face I'm so sorry. It's oh, okay. There we go. Tight. So that was that was the beautiful birth, right? I had a I had a Instagram just an account for posting pictures of records, right? And it transitioned into the into the label account, and um, you know, and and very much to the it, it's tough. The entire label is double edged swords, right? So you know, the thing I like about it from being a vinyl collector is that it's you know, it's niche and it's collectible and, and not everything is, you know, commoditized and capitalized. It's like, let's leave money on the table. Like, let's just do things to be collectible. Like, let's do small run, you know, niche bands and kind of make a community of event out of it. Because we were all there and we all loved it. And we all love these bands. So it's it's just kind of an, an expression of that, right? I just, I, I think these bands are fun. I think records are fun. I, I think why not let just have a little fun, right? Like, let's, ride, let's ride the wave. Let's ride the wave. Let's see what happens. So, are you still at the Fed? You still a Fed no, man? I'm not the Fed. I um, and, and that's what's that's what's tough about Wax Vessel right now is that in in the midst of that, I'm at the Fed. I'm um, doing Wax Vessel. It's starting off. You know, I'm having some sellouts. I'm feeling good. I'm yeah, like, this is cool. And then I quit that job, 
and I start my own um, mortgage brokerage with this same buddy. Okay. We we're trying to do the startup on. I'm like, you know, like why are we reinventing the wheel? Like, let's just let's just do mortgages. Like, let's get a couple licenses and we'll just do them ourselves. So, I'm you know running a brokerage right now. So that that is my full time job. So and that definitely allows me to you know operate it in this way where um, you know it's it's a complete nonprofit. Um, it's not a 503c or anything, but in true DIY spirit, it's just you know, hey, we made like 800 bucks, <laughs> like 1500 yeah. bucks. Like you can just have it. You know, no one right. was. Here you go. No one was no one was making any money, you know, in the bands that I'm pressing back in 2005. So it's just kind of a, you know, the price point allows this to exist. Yeah, is very much what it is. So everyone gets kind of a cool collector's object. The band gets, you know, 1,200 bucks, something like that, and you know, everybody yeah. gets a cool little little Dude, artifact. I know the feeling. So I think there's um, and I think it's cool. I'm very pro this also about sharing, uh the finances of just kind of yeah. how, what the machine looks like. And cause I think sometimes people see this sell out of something crazy <laughs> right. and then they're like, Oh my gosh, they might just be swimming in it. He, and just, like, he just made $40,000. Right. Well, right. You know, well, uh, oh. scissor, yeah. Um, yeah. And, but it's like, I always look at every project that I do big, small, ugly, tall. It's like validation for the bands of like yeah. what they've done. And no matter how big your band is, like it's always cool to just have something tactile that you're like, hey man, it's cool. It's you know, because when your band is done and over, because I'm in a band, so I I get it. Like when your band, whenever it ends, like those are the things that like people can't take away from you. Those experiences, yeah. those like I'm, real you, things, you know. You, you you've hit it again, and this is this is going to be hilarious, Punch. right? I, I can I can tell it's it, for me. It's it's these it's these kind of dichotomies right i like like the fleeting nature of you know birth of the internet kind of myspace bands and then you have something that's archival like a record right there's it, it something about having these digital bands on a physical format that you know is going to last forever that i gotta make that keyless, to me. keyless seven inch it's just yeah, right <laughs> right please <laughs> right, right exactly and people would buy it because it's oh it's yeah hilarious and it's fun and you know everyone just wants to have fun like that's okay. it was a simpler time it was a simpler, simpler time, time. Tequila, tequila tequila was, was like the burgeoning internet like yeah. hero, you know, like I cutting mean, through the leaves, just getting to the people. You know? Do you do you have like a cool MySpace name? Were you like you know Chris Kill or something like that? Uh, you have no, a I wish. No, man, I was like super lame. Like I've Damn. always been just a good, sweet boy. So it was probably something yes. real plain okay. Jane. Yeah, right. And like, but when you'd come to my page, like everybody else, this is where Facebook screws up. Okay, and they don't at the same time. <laughs> right. Whatever song you had was like, yo, this is how I'm feeling right now. Like, and those were so you know, if I just got dumped, be some real pathetic sad boy song, you know, like oh, oh you know, whatever. Right. And uh, so what? So what was Old Faithful? What was what oh, was man. the what was the profile song? Oh man, I I hopped out fast. Like okay. I I like I saw the writing on the wall. I'm like yo, like I don't <laughs> sure. eat bedazzled, sparkled stuff. I'm I'm packing my bags, but I do remember, I just I was coming out, in like of high school. So '05, I went to college, and so it was just like right there. It was they sure. were, the changing of the guard was happening, and oh. I remember, I I wasn't gonna get a Facebook. I like resisted. I was like, dude, I'm not yeah. getting a stupid Facebook. Like I don't no need way. this. Right. I didn't know how. I didn't know how right I was. Okay, I didn't know <laughs> right. how good I had it. 20, All right, yeah, I should have stuck right? with the space. And I mean, no, for, I think I probably rocked a lot of like Weezer on there. I would imagine. I mean, okay, I, I I remember I was I was holding out as well until they introduced until they introduced pages for bands. So yeah, I remember it was just done. It was just done. I'm like okay, like that's it. I was still, you know, everyone was still doing cool profiles, and I'm like, that's that's the only way that bands are going to exist on the internet. There, there's never going to be a band it's aggregator. Just, yeah. Right? It's yeah. Like I can't no. Facebook does not have a capture code thing that I can just go friend <laughs> every right. person on the planet because my first band, I definitely did that plenty. All right? right. And it to no results, obviously, but every uh, band it, did it. And they thought, yeah, yeah, dude, we're killing it with I everybody. Mean, <laughs> it was how many, wild. how many CDs and, and records do you have that have, MySpace links in the liner notes, right? Mm -hmm. Like it, it was going to be around forever. Like MySpace never was enough. Yeah, right. 
<laughs> never enough. My favorite. So like, um, I grew up, so you like death core yeah. and I actually, I went, I still go there, but it's changed. I go to this church and like they had, they built a venue. Like okay. it was like, they were a venue first and basically, and then like had a church. Like, I mean, that's classic it was turn all, of the century Christ core. I know. Like, that was, and it was, was all hardcore, you know, cause oh, yeah. like Christian hardcore was huge. Yeah. And like, of all it things, was, right. What? <laughs> right. Look, Christian kids are angry, man. All right. Yeah, look, I'm so mad. You're, you're out here trying to like save your virginity and stuff. You got some rage. Pent packed up. Up you're mad. Yeah. You, gotta, you need a, a release. Right. All right. You're like ready to punch anything that looks the wrong way at you. We All had right. um we had the underground in, in, in Cincinnati, which was which was yeah. the same thing. It was, yep. you know, yep. most mostly venue, but you know, it was you know, impending doom and you know, yeah. Devil Wears Prada, like all those guys. Like it was a, it was a, August it was a fun Red. time. Yeah, August, yeah. right. You know, the hits. <laughs> Every Joey Sturgis band, right? <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm I'm enjoying this to no end. Um, so I'm saying nostalgia's fun. Like we've tapped into oh, it. Oh, dude, Here we yeah, are. having so, fun. Dude, Let's um, just make a label that just puts that on vinyl all day. Like, dude, give so my label, what they want. Yeah, no, for real. I think that's passion bleeds through everything. And if you're into it, like you're the one who should be like leading it. And uh, yeah, it's it's been wild. So I'm um, wax vessel. Mm-hmm. My, my, my research intern, okay, just <laughs> tells me sure. started June sixth, twenty nineteen. Wow, I feel like this is like a Nardwar thing right now. Like, right. am I gonna get, right. am I gonna get freaking blasted? <laughs> is there gonna be something weird in here? Yeah, no, that that's the date. You got me. <laughs> All right, good, yeah, good, nice. This is important. And you touched on it a minute ago. Uh, the mission of Wax Vessel yeah. is what I would say, and it's. It hasn't changed much over the years. It's evolved a little bit into a spite label, right? Where its intentions were probably more noble in the beginning, and now it's over, just all about over the like out, the, you know? over the last yeah. eighteen months. Over things... the last eighteen months, right? Things have <laughs> <laughs> right. But I, I would say for me, the mission distills down to, you know, not everything has to be for everyone. And when you do things in that kind of mindset, we can make things that are we can make things that are cool. So I, I think supporting bands is number one. So that's that's kind of the main tentpole of Wax Vessel, I think, which is you know direct collaboration, direct collaboration with the artists on you know the art, remastering the audio. You know all the money's theirs. They get to kind of drive the ship to a degree. Yeah. And I think you know compensating artists in you know the digital age I, I think is something where we can do 300 records and they'll make more than they will on the lifetime of all the streams that they'll ever play yeah and that's I stuff think that people don't grasp insane. right like, like they don't grasp and it's a it, bummer you know some of these bands you'll be like yo like yeah. i will see a band that has like hundreds of thousands of streams yeah. which is awesome that's a good indicator that they have lots of right. like the the hype is there and that's right. that's super important but they'll be making less money than like a mid-level diy band that i'm like look we're not gonna go spend eight grand on a you know pr agent that's gonna like right like their big write ups gonna get you in huffpo and i can go pay a guy 50 bucks and he'll do it like right let's be smart and you know make it like sustainability and this is i'm sure this is because you worked at the Fed, you're in mortgages, all this, <laughs> well, and you've had a business implode. The, Financial the whole, sustainability yeah. is I don't like, know if you've heard of the mortgage crisis, right? Yeah. It, it's, yeah. I've, um, I, I've had labels, you know, in the past, they were kind of CD labels, same model, but with CDs. Oh, well, we'll get, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh. Slow down, slow down. So oh, I'm sorry. Okay. If, you, if you're going to dip into there, you had, barely... a former, you had a former label, Nicholas. La what was the la name? Label. Label. It's a, it's a label. It was a good one. I don't know. It's a, it was Total Death Core. Which um, I wonder what it, kind of music put out. It's it, you know, it poignant, right? Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> just deathcore. It, yeah, <laughs> totally, right? totally. It, you know, it, but it, but at the time it was pure deathcore. Deathcore is sexy. Total deathcore. It was you know everyone was it was that blogspot culture, right? Yeah. So it was you know hard you know MySpace rips and media fire links and RAR files and stuff like it was oh, just man. tape swapping, but you know it was online, right? And I, I think having done that for as long as I did unhappily i i decided i was never going to make something and sit on inventory and not sell it 
and that that is I would say ten pull number two, which is you know I want bands to get paid. I want to not. I want to mitigate all risk. I want to not have any risk on my end, and I yeah. want everyone to have a cool collectible. I think collecting things is biological and cool, and I I think for a long time record collectors have kind of been exploited. Um, on the whole variant thing, right? It's like, let's do yeah. like a first press that's, then a second press that's exciting, and then the third oh, one just... Dude, it's, it's right? a, like, and it makes you buy look, three or four copies, right? I get it. It's yeah. business. It's all of it. it but is. yeah, like, come out swinging. Right. Come out that's, swinging. And if exactly. it all sells out then, if all, like, if you right. if you give your best effort and it sells out, have at it, you know? And I'm that's, like, that's, that's what I, that's how I try yeah. to run things. And I'm like, look, here's the gnarliest stuff we I can possibly right. create. Like, <laughs> right. Let's help these bands make some money, it's, and uh, you know, let's do the do. That that's kind of the model. So I, I think all three of those things can, you know, in a perfect world, you know, mesh together very well and and kind of do something cool. And that's kind of what I saw at the beginning, right? You know, a couple of weeks for a sellout, everybody gets a cool record, everyone's happy. It's like, yeah, this is great. And then that that kind of culture, right? Which is this is exclusive, and I and I want it, and I can't have it. So you're a dick. Like that's you know. Oh how man, it, how it's, it so, it's so so real, dude. Which is, you know, but but at the end of the day, it's you know, am, am I a hero? No, you know. Thank you for asking, but no, it, it's. That's my not, next question. Right. <laughs> right. It's, it's on my notes here. I, my, I my intern, have, my intern I'm, put it there. I don't know why. I'm I'm figuring out my thoughts on this in real time because to your point, I haven't. It hasn't been around that long, and it's it's at a point now where it's already almost unsustainable like it's you know I, I have people come over and help me pack stuff just who are fans i'm like hey i i have all these records i, I don't know help me please ship them and people come and help out like that's where we are with it right yeah that's pretty and, amazing by the way um that is, you have volunteers which is, which is fantastic so i'm definitely in a privileged position where i get to do that and that they do all get to sell out and and all of the things that i wanted to accomplish get to accomplish and i get to kind of push you know, this, this kind of record culture for this very small subsect of, you know, music. I, I think that, I think it'll be cool to kind of see how this spills over into maybe larger genres. So, you know, I'm, I just, I, I just, I love records and I love collecting records. And I think as a record collector, there's nothing more fun than having something that someone else doesn't, I guess, is the best. It's this <laughs> the uh, really it. it's, like barbaric dopamine that right. is very unhealthy and is uh, not. It, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, is there any more. Destroys marriages, yeah. you know, all. There's nothing you did more what? Empowering. Yeah. Wow. I have that on vinyl, right? Yeah, like, but like, look, truly... I wield, I wield this item, this amulet. Okay? I've got a thing, right? Like, yeah. I'm... And look, if I post <laughs> a picture of this on this specific forum, people <laughs> right. will be like, "Whoa, be like, cool. he is so cool." <laughs> that guy is the raddest. Well, here's, I mean, is there any other way to quantify how big a fan you are of a band than by having the lowest pressing of their album? Because if there's only fifty, you're in the top fifty fans. Like that's just a fact. That you know, that makes total sense. Whenever I think of, I mean, look, I sell a lot of really limited stuff. Yeah. And I think like, oh, the people who got this, you know, these fifty Sandfield I make, those are top fifty fans of this band for top sure. Top fifty fans, definitely. They are already know this band. They're you know, the lies we have to tell ourselves, right? I don't, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so, you know. No, but I think uh, the thing I think that you're doing. And I think there's a lot of us, it's like you're using the scarcity thing as a yeah. way to push bands that you care about. Yeah. And some of the most successful labels like that and this that I think do a good job of this, like Joyful Noise. Joyful yeah. Noise is like the most eccentric freaking label out there. Yeah. And but you just trust like they're curating what they like and that yeah. you should get into this. And it's... I think people are like, all right, let's do it. And that's, and I'm sure it hurts your feelings too, when, when you're kind of out in society, you know, out in culture, and it's always this, you know, fuck label sentiment, right? Which is, you know, well, I don't pay for music because it's just these, you know, labeling, blah, blah, yeah. blah, blah, like, you know, and I'm like, I don't, I don't think you understand that it, it, it distills and it, and it provides you with, you know, 
provides you with I, something curated. Which I mean, I, think I is don't a think. Value. Yeah, I don't think much about it. Like, I think, I think the idea, the music industry in a lot of ways is like, I think there's some advantages that are better than ever right now. It is like the sure. wild west out there. There are no rules. Like, you've got I people know. that are like, oh. My band is okay, but I like destroy on Twitch or like something weird. And it's like, right. what? Why is your band killing it on All Twitch? Right. I don't. Your band number one. But like, got it. Yeah. I was able to go full time before COVID because of Twitch. Like, and it's yeah, it's just like wild west. Uh, like, yes, there are huge majors, and you know they're sure. putting people on torture racks. And they're saying, sing them some, you know, sure. right? You know, but and we all hope to make enough money to get said torture racks and right. do the same sure. thing, but we're jealous and we don't have it. So I know now it's, yeah, it's, it makes you sad that we don't live in some kind of space communist post scarcity society, right? We're just, everything's free and everyone can just do whatever they want. And everyone gets a nice record, right? <laughs> like it's, it's communist. <laughs> if, if only, you know, if we had replicators, <laughs> we could just print cool records on demand. Everyone just would be put happy. a record under the sickle or something. <laughs> um, <laughs> right. So I'm taking that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so why death core? Why death core? Uh, wax who knows? I mean, should we talk about my mom? It probably stems back to that to some degree. I mean, yeah. who knows? I mean, but, look, um, every death core guy is two steps from like disturbed. Like, you know, they're just, oh, wow. I they're, mean, they're like, it's like the thinking man, you know, like, yeah, it's <laughs> well, it, it's, <laughs> So I don't, I don't really like deathcore anymore. You know, as, as with anything, it, it had its. And I, I'm, I'm trying like, to. I love, I loved new metal. Okay, Limp Biscuit yeah, for me right. was well, like I mean, how, when Nookie came out. I was in sixth grade. I heard that song, that and I would, it. dude, I'd go shoot hoops at my step parents' <laughs> cul-de-sac, and I'd bring a boombox out there and just blast that. And like the girlfriend I had at the time, I say girlfriend as in sixth grade, would get sure. rebounds for me. And I felt like, I was like, Fred Durst speaks to my plight. He knows. He knows what it's like to be in the suburbs. Fred Durst he, gets me. He gets it. Okay. Fred Durst. It's, I mean, when, and, and to that Corn point. Corn understand. Those, all those kids now growing up on that. I mean, how big are you into the new metal core scene? Which is. Not, not so much. <laughs> right. That I'll, I'll shoot you a link. And, and so that's what I like. I like watching, you know, the kind of, I, I forget what it, it's called, you know, in, in, in plants and you know species where it branches off but you can trace the lineage is it a you know yeah you know a dichotomous key or whatever i like i like that so the, the common thread i think is is harsh vocals and i think deathcore was was one big branch and a couple things spread off but yeah that that lineage has ended for me unfortunately i, I think it's saturated it's now become a formula and i think there's very few modern deathcore bands that do it right insert I'm an elitist piece of shit, right? Like, I don't, I don't like having that. What I mean, um, you know, like, you know, just because it's right doesn't mean it, you know, that I'm wrong. Uh, you know, genres, uh, you know, I don't, uh, I don't like being that guy. But I, I think that that period of time, and I've, I've said this before, so I hope your editor doesn't, you know, catch me. Oh, you know, where's saying, yeah? Let me you know, recycle, right? Recycling, yeah, <laughs> recycling something, but uh, there's something about that time period. You know, it, it's the birth of the internet. Right. So you know, yeah. the internet's new. Everyone's figuring out what to do with it. And I think one of the things that happened was that you didn't have to play for your hometown anymore. You could make yeah. the music you exactly wanted to make and there'd be a hundred other fucking weirdos somewhere and they'd find it. And you could make music for an audience that wasn't geographic. Yeah. And I, I think there's a, a whole subsect of bands that use this powerful new tool to make the most unlistenable niche music that they could just as a joke. And I think that's, you know, that's what I think is, you know, the, the best part of, you know, my space as a genre for me. So that's what I love. That's the stuff I love to put out just, you know, cutting edge of, you know, the, the well, I mean, the, like, yeah, new metal. I mean, new metal mm -hmm. is like a total like example of how, you know, total internet, like just birth, yeah. because it was I like, couldn't, it couldn't have ever existed. Like it was, we were living in this, right. like, Y2K, like kind of apocalyptic rock world. Right. You had bands like Power Man 5000. They're out <laughs> here in freaking like <laughs> right. apocalypse spacesuits. And like, and it was like commercial radio because it was like, yeah, yeah this dude, we're living. Sure. We're li it's it's like, the future. We're living in the fall. Yeah. We're living right. out in the fallout. Dude. 
And then, like, you know, the world, we figured out that the Fallout was actually just new metal. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, it was <laughs> it like new metal and time. Scott Staff and stuff. And we're like, we got to save yourselves. <laughs> like, okay, well, you know, we had a good five year run. And now it's, you know, that's okay. Yeah. But that was, I don't know. I, so I think, you know, not the only one, I guess, but, you know, some p- people, you know, like that. They think that's cool. So that's, that's what I wanted to do. It, it's completely, a, you know, just a personal passion project, right? It's, you know, hubris at, at this point. It's like, how, how deep can the cuts go and people still buy them, I guess. Right. So, I mean, I don't know. It's all in good right. fun. It's so ride the wave. Um, yeah. Right. Oh my gosh. This is great. Uh, so you have partnered the good folks that got a groove yeah. and Heath at Wax Mage to work on these exclusively, basically. Ugh. How Thank much of you. your success do you attribute to those good 90, folks? 92%, 90, 93%. That's easy. good. I had like 87. So I, Is it, okay. Yeah, yeah. I think, I mean, I it's think... close. I, so I'm, I'm from Cincinnati originally. Okay. So when I had, you know, represent, I love Cincinnati. I love yeah, Cincinnati. Right. So Cincinnati's hard. the best. Um, so I, you know, Ohio has know. like so yeah. much culture, is, it's, like uh, the, the variants I, of like weird rock. Ohio's and the best. good new stuff it it's yeah. just midwest in general but just ohio is just yeah. everywhere has these shirts but like it's true oh, <laughs> ohio is weird it's, and i love ohio I mean, ohio is we, a city like you can hit like six cities I know. you can you could tour you could do a week-long tour in ohio and it's different demographics it's different things yeah, I mean, dude. should we say it should we say that ohio is the cultural epicenter of the entire united states i think you're I mean, right i think you go play you go play an OTR <laughs> yeah, at right. Motor one night, mm-hmm. all right? And you're like, dude, yeah, this is rad, all right? And then you go this play is, in Youngstown, and you're like, this right. is a different culture. Yeah. Like, <laughs> this, is, this is also Ohio, right? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. Right. <laughs> so, I, yeah, I'm no, speaking, I'm I've only read. I've not lived this. <laughs> no, you're you're right on the money. That's a, that's <laughs> some good insight. You, you don't have to quantify that. You can just say that, and people be like, fuck yeah, this guy knows what Ohio's about. Yeah, He's good. yeah man. He, uh... So, I mean, so I'm, I love Ohio, you know, yeah. same thing. I'm, I'm from there. I love it. So, you know, coincidentally, there's only two places in the entire world that press records and one of them's in Ohio. Right. So back with the, in the total death core days, I did one record and just because it was local, I'm like, I'll go to got a groove. Right. Like that, I'll press it there. And Advantage. it was completely, completely uneventful pressing. I, I did like, you know, green swirl. Right. It was just, yeah. you know, yeah. who cares? Cause it's cheap, you know, and, um, my local record store in Ohio was, was plaid rope. So, you know, soul step, yep. um, yep. you know, so old you know, Melvin, right. So, you know, so I'm kind of a wrestling what? promo Melvin right now. Right. So sick you, Melvin. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, Melvin is know, Melvin's uh, man after my own heart. Yeah. He's, I mean, those, those, those plaid room guys, those soul step guys, you know, the, the, the coal mine guys, coal mine. dude, I'm they so are, sorry. Not, they not, are the indie soul label. Soul. They are the coal like, mine. I don't know. Coal mine is I'm like, sorry, coal mine is, you no, know, it's okay. They are the, Thank like, you. for me in the last like yeah. five years, like indie label success story. I'm like, yeah. dude, this is They're, what it looks like. This is incredible. They, they truly give a shit. And I think it is incredible. Like I, you know, I go to plaid room and, you know, I, I remember one time I'm in there and they had some, some LP, I don't remember, but it was one of those like stripe smashes that, got a groove does yeah yeah you know, where it's it was like black record with the red stripe i've done those I before said, i said what yeah, yeah. the fuck is that I'm like, what, what am i looking that? at here what is that right i was blown away and they're like oh yeah you know it's got a groove like you this wax man you, you know and like and it was they're all very secretive and cool and you know i didn't know what was going on and i'm like can i buy it and they're like you fucking idiot of course not you know like let's get out of here hey no get out of here you can't just walk into You're a grifter. store and buy this like you fucking poser i'm like oh shit okay so it was it was very much that and I, I just remembered. I'm like, okay, like wax, 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 wax. I was, I was obsessed at that point. And as you know, wax vessel was kind of you know percolating. I'm like, well, you know, I, I remember, you know, those wax mages look pretty cool. You know, I think I want to, I want to do some of those, and I'll, I'll go back to got a groove. And it didn't start out that way at all. I did the class, you know, I did 25, yeah. and you know, blah blah blah. Right. Um, just gave them, just gave them to the members. I didn't even sell them, which was the only smart move past me made. Which was, you know, uh, again keeping them out of circulation and making it so you you can't have one, which is you know, the unofficial model, right? Of course, um, of course. 
and it kind of evolved over time as the fear of not selling out and having higher unit prices and you yeah. know paying like I can you know I can now afford to do it because I'm not sitting on you know seven thousand dollars for a you know three hundred piece LP order you know yeah. like I don't have to worry about if I'm going to be able to sell you know thirty dollar LPs for a you know single LP a single sided LP you know that's you know twelve minutes yeah, of that's pretty that's pretty that's pretty awful yeah it's pretty yeah, terrible it's, it's pretty it's pretty terrible so I'm like okay so now that the now that the fear is gone now that the risk is gone we can you know, we can push the format, we can push, you know, the, this, this model a bit. And I, I think, you know, you know, for me, I love boutique shit, right? I, I think just as a general kind of guiding life principle, like if I have the option to spend 10,000 times as more and get, you know, like a toothpick, that's, you know, there's 10 of them, right? And like some, you know, Swedish yeah. guys like- Yeah, you know, and have at least 7% better experience for right. 7, <laughs> right. like, times I, the amount I of money. Love Buckle me up. Return. I tell you what, you know, so that that's, I love that. So I think I to have a label that I get to kind of do that with and, you know, price people out and make them artificially scarce and, you know, <laughs> right. not sell them to people. I think, I, I don't know. I think it's funny. Like I'm just having a good time. I don't know. I like that you own it. That's important. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's, it's important. You know, I, like, this is, this is, to I'm just going to call this I'm Nicholas not, raw yeah. and like, right. You know. <laughs> Well, I mean, contrary to what I think some people think, like, I'm not dumb. Like, right. you should press more. I'm like, okay, you know, like, very well formulated, right? I didn't think of that, like, at this point. It, it's it's all very intentional because I, I, it can't be my full-time job. Like, I have, a, I have a baby on the way. You know, like, my fiance and I were, were engaged. We're having this baby. Yeah. You know, I've got my, my, my job that I, you know, have to manage, you know, daily. It's just me and one other guy, and we're running a, you know – mortgage brokerage, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of work. So it's this, this is, you know, it started off as a hobby and now it's a second job and it can't get any bigger, you know, and I, I can't, I can't have it get any bigger or it's, I might have to make the decision to, you know, get, get in the music business. Right. Which would well, yeah. be regrettable. And then it'd be tough to keep it a nonprofit because you're like, yo, I got to pay my bills. Money. And that, but the precedent's been set. And I was like, this dickhead's charging money now. Like, Look at this. You know, yeah. <laughs> this no. fucking capitalist. And, 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 that's, and that's the line. I have to walk because it's like, okay, well, I could just do 500 and then I'd make more money. But then they're less collectible. So nobody gives a shit. So and they may not buys them. sell it's, out. You know, yeah. it's, Dude, totally. you know. Totally. Yeah, That's I mean, what I'm it's thinking a, about. It's life I've been living for five years. So yeah, I, I don't get know it. if you're familiar. <laughs> I get it. Uh, right. So um, got a few more questions, and then we'll yeah, bounce out of here, man. Uh, oh. What were your inspirations for starting the label? Man, inspirations. Well, uh, there's a couple. So I think one of the things I wanted to accomplish is because all of these records were some from the same era. I wanted mm -hmm. to redo all of the art in the style of kind of niche bands of this era. So you'll notice the aesthetic, it's all primarily one artist. You know, the art style is, you know, all, all very similar. I think this kind of, you know, beat down aesthetic, you know, this kind of skeuomorphic properties and, you know, cellophane and rips and paper. It's kind of, you know, punk throwback collage style, but new wave, you know, I, I think the art, I think, you know, I'd love to make a coffee table book of everything. I think that's, I think the identity and the, and the art and everything kind of coming together and, you know, matching the variants. I, I think that's all very important. So that was, that was one, you know, goal was to do that. And my inspiration for that, you know, artisan era, you know, relapse does a great job. Like, of course, you know, yeah. like all of these, you know, all of these kind of longstanding industry guys, like, you know, every, every label that does, you know, I guess really pure noise, you know, re really kind of got me in the beginning there. Like they're, of course, those are sick. Um, I don't, I don't know. I, I just know I wanted to do something cool and all the guys that were doing cool stuff were doing represses of it. And, and I didn't want to do that. So then it's kind of, you know, all, all those kind of, you know, niche black metal labels that don't do any represses and just tell people to fuck off all day. Like, I think, so that's kind of the other half, You're like, right? So how like, can I do that with a smile? Like, right, like how, how can I right, be a so pleasant how be, person? How can I be like death call and like also like dog nights, right? So how can I be like playful and fun <laughs> with like beautiful records, but also inaccessible and tell people to fuck off all day? Like it's, you know, it's the convergence of that. So that that those were my big inspirations. I wanted to do 
unsigned, you know, kind of niche stuff. I wanted the audio to be nice. I wanted the art to be nice. I wanted the records to be nice. And I wanted to, to be a, you know, collector experience here. Cause anyone can buy a record. Like if, you know, For but sure. you know, I, I think it's cool if there, you know, there's a story, like all of my spines are printed backwards. So that way when they're on your shelf, they don't match. And people are like, why aren't those spines matching? And then you have to pull it out and interact with it. And like, you're like, what the fuck? You know, like everything is just, I don't put that's smart. Sides. That's yeah. a clever thing. I didn't, I don't, I always put stupid etching in the, <laughs> like I always, yeah. the devil, I always yeah. put like jokes or something stupid. See, I did one once that a bands always love it, but one band did not. And oh. they were like, I was getting ready to get this thing. And they're like, why would you ever put that? We are a serious band serious and band. <laughs> we have done X, Y, and Z. And you need to take that. And I was like, oh my gosh, like you're different oh. people. I didn't. Okay, I didn't know you were this, and not the vibes, it's okay. Right? <laughs> it's, it's okay. All right, it sure. wasn't a big deal, but it just like it caught me off guard. But yeah, it's yeah. just someone asked me the other day, "Why don't you have uh, catalog numbers?" And I said, "I do, but they're non-canonical." <laughs> and all I, I'm Man, just, that's I a just cool move too. <laughs> I just like it's yeah. just like uh, you know, order comes through, and I'm like, "That's yeah. ROM 2000." Right. Okay. <laughs> I don't you know. see, and I'm I'm too, you know, neurotic for that. Like I really I'm just too lazy it from it. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> no. Say say you're a tortured soul. Say you're a genius, and people just don't get it yet. You know, but they'll soon find out. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's I I wanted to, you know, and and that's the thing. So all my catalog numbers are very intentional. Like I have all these different demarcations and stuff, and a very strict set of rules. So everything sits on your shelf nicely. Like if you were to buy all of them, you know, like yeah. everything is very. You know, so I, like, It'll turn like it's into a collector label or something. Yeah, right. It, it, you know, it's a collector label. Like, let's do something. Like, is it possible to do something for record collectors without exploiting them? And yeah, I, I think for sure. I, I think the answer, and, and that, that's what you know. That's what and I it try. It can to, be done. It can, it can be, be done, done, but no one I can see. make any money. Right, you're just not allowed. That's that's the that's the only trade off. It's that either that to... or you have to like <laughs> be like me and commit your life to this forever. And just, Fuck it. Those are those are two options. It. It's terrible. Yeah, it's terrible. No, it's, yeah. <laughs> don't, don't start a label. This is the opposite of what you were yeah. going for. With this, I had to I do think. a manufacturing side to make any money. Um, <laughs> so, what do I know? Um, what are if you can speak to it? Uh, sure. Just like one or two bands that you hope to work with in the future. Man. So I, I have some pipe dreams, right? Yeah, so hope... I think pipe dreams are the best because sometimes they're like so unattainable. It's like you can put it out there and it doesn't matter. Okay, so that's good. So I, I think my number one, and this is no surprise, I talk about it every fucking day, is Fetish by The Boy Will Drown. So it's my number one favorite album of all time. It was put out on, on Earache. It was just a CD. And I said, hey, can I you know, like buy the rights, I'll give you all the money. Like right. I license it, I'll give you all the money. Like I'll do 10,000 and throw them in the trash. Like wh wh whatever you want, just let me do it. And they said, oh, that's impossible. And then they, that, that was the end of it. So, <laughs> yeah, you know, like, okay. <laughs> like I'm just- That's like, impossible. That, 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 that's what I run into all the time. Like, like even it got a groove. I'm like, hey, can I do 500 wax mages? And they're like, obviously oh, no. you can't. Right, they're like, no, of course not. And I'm like, well, what if I paid you a hundred dollars each? And they're like, it's not a money thing. Like, you just you, you can't do it. And I'm you'll, like, you'll just, stop like, the work with me, right? Yeah, well, they're not gonna do it. Like, we don't have the, we don't have the throughput. And I I don't like, you know, you know, capitalist asshole side of me. I'm like, why can't money solve my problems? You know, why won't you just let me, you know, money, 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 money. <laughs> buy buy my money, money, like right? So you know that that one will probably never happen just because of bureaucracy, right? So well, that's that's the example of label stuff. Sometimes bands would love to do stuff. Because I yeah. ran into this too, um, and then they're like, "Man, if if so and so would release it, I'd die to have that done." But right. like for them to release well, it, I have to pay twenty grand <laughs> right. to get it released. It's yeah, red tape, right? These these pencil pushers, these label guys, these, these you yeah, know, they are yeah, you know. these institutional guys. Yeah, it's so that one. It, it's just unfortunate because it's probably the best body of work ever made in recorded human history, and it's That's, unfortunate yeah. that. That's that bold. I can't have it on a I can't have it on a dumbass niche gimmick format, you know? Like what a travesty. I have to listen to it on a CD or, you know, on iTunes or something. Like, you Just, know, uh, what is life? It doesn't satisfy. Um yeah. I want to I want to talk to you about shipping. Yeah. Uh, or don't, but okay. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Yeah. Uh, let's let's hear. Uh, da, 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 da. You're going to enjoy it. It's uh okay. 
here we go. Uh, via Nicholas, yeah. reporting from Metal with a Reason. Okay. I don't want to be a Scrooge, but some people are so effing entitled. I spent so much time and money making sure these aren't pre-orders, and people can't wait three weeks for a one-man label that does everything and does this as a hobby to ship. It's just maddening. It's exactly why I shut down my other label. I had people messaging me the same day their order went through and asking for the tracking number. Not the kind of business I want to run. Yeah. Well, that's a hot take. <laughs> <laughs> and it, <laughs> yeah, well, okay. Yeah, fuck them. You know, 20, 2020, his feelings are the same. It, it's, I don't know. It's, it's tough, right? Because you, How there is you get volunteers. Lo- like I, like I have yeah. to pay people. So, uh, well, I mean, I, mean, I have, have a couple ever... oh, part time goons that I pay. I'm a... Nicholas. Okay. Can you, I, I'm, I don't know. I don't know if this is on my end or I'm so sorry. Let's. I won't tell anybody. Okay. Spend all so, the mortgage money on <laughs> on records, you know, not on internet service. Right. I don't know what's going on here. I, I so I, I think I caught the tail end of it, and and yeah, I mean the volunteer, I mean, it's a godsend, right? Like so, right now I have nine hundred that are getting delivered on Saturday, which you know, not that many uh, objectively, but I, you know, it's just to me, and I got to go box all these up and get them out. So it takes a lot of time. It's a lot of like time, and I. And also, I don't want to do it. Like, it sucks. So it's, you know, it's a double-edged sword. <laughs> like, it's terrible. And, and my feelings are the same. Because it's easy to just, I think, you, you know, you, you feel like you're entitled to something because you spent the $30, right? Like, I gave you the $30, so now you give me the thing to the way that I want it. And it's... And in a perfect world, yes, right. you know, the second you order it, I would ship it out, like, of course. And there's such a level of, of trust involved, right? Because like, a lot of these are because, you know, I, I'm doing three a month because I have a, a baby being born, you know, in a month. And I want to make sure every, you know, my pipeline is kind of, you know, set up for that because I'm probably going to take some time off here in the beginning. And there is a lot of pre-orders and a lot of trust and it takes a lot of time. And it's, but, it, but it's like, you, you know, the drill at this point, somebody who's Cut me some slack, you know. Like, how about you just leave me alone for a minute? You know, like I don't, I, don't, I and, and that's, and that's the beautiful privilege, privilege position that I'm in right now, which is yeah, I, it's gonna sound like we're a bunch of crybabies. I know, truly, but they don't know, like they won't know. I don't think. I think if you, you don't not, understand, you don't know, man. It, it's, and 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 they're absolutely right. Sure, I guess when you walk into a store and you pay your money, you get your thing. Everything should operate there like that. Absolutely. But also, like, that's you just got to shut the fuck up. Like, it's just, you got to just, you know, hot, <laughs> you got to just hot not. take. I'll make sure hot that that is, like, with no context is yeah, just, your like, bite, right? like, the teaser bite. <laughs> just. Right. And uh, Nick, la- Nick tells his fans like, to shut the fuck up. Yeah. Yeah. This is, this is, a, this is a good way to run a label. Um, last uh, real question and then five fast ones and we're done. Okay. Five, five that don't matter. Uh okay. What do you think slash hope the future for Wax Vessel will be? So in answer to your great uninterrupted question, uh, that'll be a, a clean, that'll be a good edit right there. I, um, I, I think my, my dream goal, uh, one release every two months, you know, in hand, no pre-orders, like 300 units, you know, there's a little bit of pageantry Gosh, once, you know, six times a year. You know? That's that's the best. That's the dream. It, that's such the it. dream to, that you don't have to do like thirteen a year to get by no, to like exist. I don't. I don't, <laughs> don't want to do that. Right. I just want to. Oh man. I want it to be fun. In the beginning, it was you know maybe like it was one every two months, and then it was one a month, and then it was two a month, and then it was three a month, and now it's three a month with also three merch drops a month. Right. So it's it's getting away from me, and I, I think having you know my foot on the brake a little bit and kind of getting back to you know, the core, you know, the getting back to the music. Yeah. We've not, really you know, changed, blah, blah, blah. you know, since <laughs> yeah, June right. of last year. It's been, a, it's been a long 18 months. I tell you what. <laughs> no, um, seriously. So the reason I, I wanted to reach out was I just really yeah. like what you're doing. I love the, the mindset of, I'm just really, I'm really into the, 
capitalistic side of everything or just okay, make sure. something like making something matter. And I think the way that you're doing things is giving intrinsic extra value to these products and to these bands because right. of the like, hey, we're not we'll never repress this. And I yeah. think there's something to that. And I think it's a great like a great business model. Well, and I I appreciate it. Thank you. I and that means I mean, I'm not to turn it into a, you know, kiss ass fest right but it's like i mean you're like you're fucking og like you get it right like you're doing this i'm I'm kind of the fucking kid on spring break and i'm running in i'm like Ugh, and then like i'm gonna leave you know and then you guys will all still be you know <laughs> in here I'm doing o- stuff right that's but weird to think it's i mean you, you guys are the industry guys and i'm the i'm the tourist I'm industry I, I, yeah no no you stop it you stop it okay. right now i mean okay <laughs> I mean, you're, you're no longer the plucky underdog i'm sorry you're i the am industry man i now. am yeah. I know. I'm so plucky. It's, uh, it's, you don't know it, it, how much I, luck I got left. The I think the, the the big thing for me is I never I never wanted to see one in like a dollar bin, you know. So give it time. I mean, well, I mean, right? Like, if, I mean, obviously, right? But maybe I'll just I'll just delete Facebook so I never have to see it, right? Um, that's that that that's kind of where I was at it. I'm like, how how do I? And no one's going to be mad about no represses because intellectually, there's only 200 fans of this, and I make 300 for all the hype beasts and Facebook guys, right? I, you know, the, the bands are important to me. They're important to a small group of people. And, you know, they were never on vinyl, they were never on CD. They just, you know, existed. Just go listen to it. Like I put them on my band camp, you know, for a dollar. Yeah. Just go, go enjoy it. You know, the records are just, they're, they're fun. It's an, it's an artifact. I, I think. You know, no, you, you can't really be too mad about no, no represses, right? Because it, it probably shouldn't be on vinyl to begin with. It's just for fun. <laughs> it's right? spitting like in it's, the face of evolution. Right. <laughs> it's like, well, how am I going to listen to it on my Crosley Cruiser if I don't have it on vinyl for me? It's like, it's like you don't care. Like, you're not going to listen to it anyway. Like, stop pretending that records are for listening to in 2020. All right? Like, it's a, it's oh, a gimmick. Man. We all oh, know man. it. Like, it's, you know. That is a hot take. You know what you want to talk about frequency response curves. You want to talk about, you know, dynamic headroom. Like let's, let's get into it. Cause I, you know, I, I used to, I grew up going to, you know, Rocky mountain and, and Axpana and stuff like, so I, I've tried to approach it from an, an audio file background and I'm not a, I don't sit around and I do sit around and listen to records, but I'm not like going to buy a record for my optimal listening setup. Like I don't need that to feel like I can't hear the music otherwise, especially yeah. for a bunch of MySpace demos. Right. So <laughs> you know it's probably let's chill. oh <laughs> oh man this just really Not, yeah. like when i put this record down <laughs> this takes me back to 04 in a way that i didn't think was possible right it's, <laughs> right. it's like come on like right it's so that's that's me it's like do you, it's a gimmick and the gimmick sells the units which allows them to exist which gets the band some money and allows an object to be in the world and well, that's a good gimmick. And a, gimmick's not a bad a word. Community. Yeah, it's not. That's probably, what I'm saying. If you're a wrestling fan, <laughs> gimmick, gimmick is what like they say like that makes like what's your gimmick? What makes you you? Yeah. What's your like identifiers and like right. identifiers for you? Nonprofit, no represses, deathcore. Yeah. Like that's right. the gimmick, and like that's and like good wax. Like a gimmick is not bad. The word no, gimmick has been tainted. It's not. It's I'm I'm Respect, taking gimmick back. Gimmick, and I hope yeah. I hope you'll join me on my quest. Oh, right? I'm I've never left. Um, okay. <laughs> okay. So five fast stupid questions. Okay. We'll get out of here. And uh, man, in a post COVID world, I hope hope to meet, hope to hang, and show I you. Know, like, go to like I wrote... go to Emporium. All right. Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, eventually, COVID will not. Be at the center of our lives, and I'd love to. Like, let's you know, let, let, let me come over uh-huh. to your freaking cave, man. Let's, like, let's, hey. let's, let's, have a, yeah. let's have a good time. Let's let's do the do. Okay. Uh, okay. Five fast questions. Okay. Did you have seen hair or any lip piercings? Oh God! So my mom wouldn't let me get good the mom snake bites that I wanted. That's good I know. mom. She, she, you know, my parents wouldn't so let I, me have Jinko jeans. They love me too right? much. They, <laughs> I know. They wouldn't even let me have That's, Lee pipes. I'm. I'm the worst scene kid in the entire world. I mean, I did have the fringe. I did have the bang. I did. It was dyed blonde. You know, I had the shutter shades and the big Osiruses and the leopard print pants. Like I was, oh, you know, Osiris. Oh. Oh. Oh, I had, oh. yeah, <laughs> yeah, I had the Osiruses. So I was, I was like very mall core, you know, like I was a hot topic yeah. poser, no doubt. 
Fantastic. I really enjoy that. Uh, favorite fast food chain and why? Favorite fast food chain? It's got to be White Castle. Just because. Dude, Castle I don't... rules. Castle yeah, rules. White Castle, so it slams. Like, it's the best. And I don't eat a lot of fast food. So when I do, I want to make it count. And, like, nothing's better than it's just you got too many White Castles. And you're just sitting there eating them. Like, it's. Season fries, best yeah. mozzarella sticks in the game. Best mozzarella stick, little chicken rings. Like I just, Dude, I, people, I get fifty pounds of food and just it's people who people who rip on White Castle, no, are sycophants. Yeah, they're Neanderthals. Nuts. Like they don't, Philistine. yeah, they don't understand. Yeah. They've never had a good time. <laughs> like the no. like they just That's they a, don't understand. They're not. You know, if you don't like white, other people, if you, if you don't like White Castle, you're a cop. I agree. I agree with that point. <laughs> Uh, okay, this is a two-parter. Okay. You gotta, but it's quick. Who's your favorite volunteer? Favorite volunteer? That's yep. come to my house to pack yep. records, you mean? Yep. Oh. Oh, God, that's tough. How's that a two-parter? Uh, you I haven't mean, got just, the second part yet. <laughs> I mean, just from a productivity standpoint, it would have to be Casey Dishman. He just cranked it out. Mike was useless. He lost all the stickers. He didn't sign anyone's <laughs> orders. You know, Mike, I love you. You're a great volunteer, but were you the best? No, it was negative productivity. You know, I mean, Bryce, Bryce did a great job. I mean, they're all great. But my favorite volunteer to pick a political answer, it's going to be Dish my man. beautiful, beautiful fiance. You know, oh. Danielle, she, you know. Well, that's nice. Enter- that's nice. Yeah, my right. wife gave up on helping me years ago. So good for you. Uh, I got a little bit time, I think. I got some goodwill. And who's your least favorite volunteer? Least favorite volunteer. This is a terrible two-parter. This is Least a podcast. Favorite. Okay. I know. We need sound bites. Least, <laughs> Least favorite volunteer. Is this like user submitted questions where people like. Look. Okay. Do Least not favorite. question the great and powerful odds. Like, I, don't, I don't have a. I mean, by virtue of coming and volunteering, I don't have a least favorite. But I think it's going to be the same answer as the first one, but reversed. I'm going to say Mike King. Oh. His favorite because I felt so bad that he literally got in an airplane and flew to come help me pack records. That's amazing. It is amazing. And, I'm and like, then why now, would, why? and now you're out here just tombstoning him on the on the I, steps of the Fed I, Federal Reserve. I feel some some sort of responsibility that you know what what happened. How did I come into Mike King's life where he's going to get on an airplane to come and do manual labor for me? So I think that's a, a worse volunteer in the sense that. Mike, you got to aim higher. Like, don't, don't let me take advantage of you like this. You know, like I have to protect you from coming back. Mike's a national treasure. Um, I know Mike's the best. Like, I got... <laughs> He really is. It's also got like the best instant, like his it's, Instagram vinyl game is really good. Like it's, it's really I good. Mean, Mike, is, Mike is an icon. Like that's, He's that's an icon. I, you know what you asked me, how much God of Groove was responsible? 93%. I'm going to put King of the Hill. Maybe three of, of the remaining percent, <laughs> no doubt. Like he, I'm telling you, like I, you know, he bought some records and put them up, and I got, you know, like 800 likes overnight. He drives, really kind of kicks, yeah. He, he kickstarted it. No, he we the traffic. He's he's not a fake influencer. He's a real influencer. Yeah, dude. Like I would send him a record in exchange for likes. You know, my, ten out of ten would do again. Mike's the um, best. How many times have you dyed your hair? <sighs> in my life, maybe four. So. I mean, maintenance, right? I don't count, but I'm talking distinct styles or dyes. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I think Whoa. four. I, I, I had the long and the blonde, and then I dyed it black, and then I cut it all off, and it was blonde. Not not as many as I would like, but I mean, I, do you like my COVID shag? My my apathy? My apathy That's nice. shag? I it's mean, nice. Maybe, maybe I'll die it before I, I go back to my, you know, fed cut, right? It, it's oh, just fed. working from, yeah, right. And uh, last uh, last one here. When was the last time you were in a mosh pit? And did you two-step? Wow. Last time I was in a mosh pit. Uh, I'm telling you. So I, it's been so long. I'm, I'm not a big concert guy, per se. I'm kind of a studio mm. listening to big. Mm. I'm, 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 I'm not a big concert guy, to be honest with you. I was always kind of internet guy. But um, it's safer the last there. true, truly... The last true pit I get, I got in. I, I think I, I think it was a mirror at House of Blues in Chicago, and like last song, you know they throwed some, you know, goodbye to the gallows. They threw like some old school Amir stuff in there, and it, it, it I, I was picking up pennies. Like I was, you it, it, it know, took you away. It took you away. It took, yeah, I, I was there. I was teleported back to a younger body. 
you know, that could take that kind of damage and not <laughs> a pudgy, take, out of shape, unflexible. <laughs> no, I can't. I can't do it anymore. I, you know, I'm one of those guys. Like, I, uh, there's, it's always like the friendship pit and life's good. And yeah. then like, there's like, there's like one Thor in there. And if Thor it's, is out there for good, it's the best it, time. And if Thor I mean, is out there to kill, it's like, yo, like I'm, he was, I'm not cut out for this. And it was, it was, and thank God it wasn't like an edgy, like scene kid, you know, mosh. Thank pit. goodness like, it wasn't, wasn't like, a Christian hardcore show. No, right. <laughs> it was, it was a totally commercial mosh pit. It dude, was I got Luke Kang was, like bicycle kicked at one of right. the shows. One. I'm so serious, dude. I was like, what just happened? And he probably had a great time. Here we are still talking about it, right? Like I, you wouldn't trade that. If you could get unkicked, you would not Give take me the that bicycle deal. kick, buddy. I'm right. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Oh, uh, save me. Um, hey, this was a great time. Yeah, and uh me, dude. dude, I like what you're doing. And you know, I hope uh, nothing but the best for your your business, moreover Thank your you. family. And Thank uh you. dude, being married is be married rules. Okay, don't let anybody I'm, ever tell you otherwise. They're jabronis, they I'm don't looking, know. I'm looking I'm looking forward to it. And I I, I, I can't get off without, you know, thanking you for having me and all the you know tidings as well and i i'm such a big fan and it's cool talking to industry guys it's mostly just internet guys you know what i mean like it, it's kind of a, a cool club that it, it's nice to kind of be poking into that you know like yeah. it, 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 it's fun i'm having I'm, you know thank you for having that, me so much that's the reason i started the podcast <laughs> <So>. <laughs> if there's right. a christmas card or a circular or an email or something i'd love to I'd love to get on it okay you know? so, yeah so, let, yeah let me know I don't know if it's in the budget. Um, right. <laughs> well, hey, you take it easy, and uh, yeah, we'll be in touch. Absolutely, man. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Right. Again. Do, 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 do.